Hello everybody, welcome to the video. I'm gonna go through everything that you need to know to get the best out of driving the DB BR401 Ice 1. We split this video up into many chapters so that at any point in the future, you can simply jump to the relevant part if you get stuck. In this section, we'll be taking a quick tour of the cab and finding out where all the controls are. This is the throttle and is part of your speed controls. You push it forward to apply more power or you put it back to apply less. The reverser is the other key part of your speed controls. It activates the cab and allows you to set the direction of where the unit will move. You will operate it by inserting the key and then setting your direction of travel. This lever is the train brake and allows you to apply all of the brakes on the train. Pull it towards you to apply more brake pressure and push it away from you to release it. Traveling at such high speeds, you'll need to get used to the careful application of these brakes. This is the master and headlight switch. None of the other switches will work until you turn this particular one on. These switches let the train draw power from the overhead wire by raising the pantograph. The left hand control raises and lowers it and the right hand control is the main circuit breaker. This lever is the AFB control. It allows you to set the train speed to a specific amount, similar to cruise control you find in some cars. We will cover this in more detail later. This is the brake clock. Simply turn the key to unlock the brakes. The unit's headlight and cab light controls can be found either side of the master switch. Make sure you turn those on before starting your journey. These are your PZB controls, which are also used for LZB. They help you stick to the speed restrictions when traveling at high speeds, but don't worry, we'll also cover these in more detail later. If you find your train needs to get a bit more grip in bad weather, you'll find the sand lever here. Push it and the sand is dropped on the track to give you extra grip. Whilst we're on the subject of bad weather, your wiper controls are located on the right hand side of the footwell. Once you've reached your destination, you're going to want to let your passengers on and off the train. You can find the door controls here. And finally, the button we all want to push, the horn. You can find a pedal in the footwell or a lever on the right hand side of the cab, whatever is your preference. Go nuts. <laughs> In this section, we will cover how to get the train started and stopping it safely. First, insert the reverser key and set it to forward. Then move the master and instrument light switch to on. You then need to set the headlight so others know this train is operational. Move the switch to the bright setting. Now, unlock the train's brakes. The train is now ready to move. If you are at a station, open the doors and give the passengers time to board. Once they have boarded safely, close the doors and prepare to head off. Release the brakes by moving the brake lever forward into the running position. You will hear a quiet hiss as this happens. Now, apply some throttle to get the train moving. Do this by pushing the lever forward. The train is immensely heavy, so apply a generous amount initially to get it moving. Once you have reached your desired speed, you can maintain this pace by coasting. Pull the throttle control back to the off position. This will not slow your train down, it will just maintain its current speed, so bear that in mind. When you need to slow down or stop, simply pull the brake lever towards you. Be mindful of how hard though, because if you pull it all the way, it will activate the emergency brake. This brings the train to an abrupt halt. So we suggest getting some practice in using your brakes, particularly at high speeds or as you approach stations. In this section, we will cover how to set up and use the AFB safety system. AFB allows the driver to set a specific speed for the train to travel at. Once the power is applied, it will never exceed that speed. Really useful for high speed management over long distances. Start by turning on the AFB controls. You'll find this on the panel located on the back wall of the cab. Turn back around and move the AFB control to your desired speed. Apply the throttle to maximum power and the train will then accelerate up to your chosen speed and won't exceed it. Cool, right? If you wish to check your AFB speed setting without taking your eyes off the track, it also appears on your HUD. You'll find it next to your actual speed and it's highlighted in blue. When you want to stop the train, use the train brake instead of reducing the AFB speed. AFB will also work in tandem with the LZB safety system and we use the LZB's maximum permitted speed if that is lower than your assigned AFB speed. I promise you the abbreviations make it sound way more complicated than it really is. It's super simple and it's really useful. Talking about the LZB safety system, let's crack on with that. 
The LZB safety system is there to ensure drivers know what the current speed restrictions are because the braking distances would be too high for normal signal operations. It also applies the brakes automatically to prevent crashes, an essential tool really when trackside signage would just become a complete blur at 280 kilometers per hour. To activate LZB, you first need to turn it on. Much like the AFB, you'll find the button on the panel located on the back wall of the cab. While you are looking at this panel, enable the AFB too. Set AFB speeds limit as you had done before and apply the power to the unit and get it on the move. If you're in an LZB monitored area, a little blue light with a U will appear both in the cab and on the HUD. The current LZB maximum speed restriction is displayed on the cab speedometer with a small red triangle. It is also visible on your HUD with a blue marker. Marked on the cab's display just below the speedometer is the up and coming speed restriction. So if your train is slowing down and you aren't sure why, Check this number. As you approach sections where you are required to stop or slow down, the LZB safety system will automatically reduce your train speed. Even if your AFB desired speed is set higher, the train will safely reduce its speed by the time you arrive in the section with the restriction. It will also display the change in restriction on your HUD and cab speedometer. The train isn't fully automated, so ensure you are vigilant and apply any additional braking Required. If you are traveling too fast or approaching a speed curve which will derail the train, a light with a G will appear on the HUD and cab display. This alerts the driver that he needs to apply the brakes. If he's exceeding the limits, the G will start flashing and the emergency brake will be applied. And you don't need this. On the routes, you will see a dark signal that you pass and it informs you of the use of LZB blocks. These are signal blocks which can be only used when under LZB. They increase the capacity the line. The line's larger blocks are split into smaller blocks for LZB. As your train comes to a halt, you will see a block board. These are the white boards on the right of the track. This shows you the block you're in and marks the next section, which you are not permitted to enter unless LZB permits. Once the train ahead of you has moved on from this section, your permitted LZB speed will increase. Once you are nearing the end of an LZB control section, the yellow end light will appear both on your HUD and console. It will continue to flash and you have 10 seconds to respond. An audible warning sound can also be heard until you press the release. This simulates you confirming that you're about to take full control of the train back from LZB. Press the P PZB release button to make this confirmation. You now have full control of the train. If you fail to do so, the train will begin to brake and reduce its speed down to zero. Once you have acknowledged this, the alarm will stop and the end light will remain solid, reminding you that LZB is ending. Once you have exited the LZB section, these lights will go out. You are now fully in control and you should remain vigilant for changing speed restrictions and signals. Your AFB will also become inactive, so if you wish to use that again, you need to set it to zero before picking your desired speed or turning it off to gain full manual control. And finally, we'd like to go over the recovery of emergency brakes. We understand with the ice one that this can be a little tricky, so here we go. First things first, you want to let the train completely stop. You then want to reset the throttle. Apply a little brake on the brake handle and then this is the most important part you want to press the HLL fill to recharge the brake pipe. You need to wait a little for things to recharge. Release the brake and apply a little power. Again have a little patience and wait as it won't move for a little while as the brakes are still recharging down the train. Once you begin to move, apply the power as normal. watching the video everybody hopefully now you can master that machine if you'd like further support with driving the ice one please head to our official forums or check out our comprehensive manuals at trainsimworld.com the link is in the description below if there are any other tutorials that you might find useful and would like me to look into doing them please mention them in the comments below as i will be reading them and i will see you in the next one